Hello friends, it's Casey. Welcome back to another journal spread. This is being done in my art journal that was made from a Pocky box. And I'll show you how I make my art journals in another video. I've already gessoed my pages. And there's my color scheme that I'm going to work with. If you haven't seen my previous videos, these cards are from a set called Color Cubes by Sarah Renee Clark, and I'll link that down below. I really like them. When I start new journal spreads, um, it can be hard to look at the blank page and, you know, what am I going to do with it? But when I have a color scheme, then I get inspiration on what I can be, be uh, making. So I'm starting with some brown packing paper that I just got in a box from eBay or whatever. And I'm starting with some collaging. And this is a piece of paper from a pack of paper I got from Walmart. It's a pack of scrap paper and there's my head. Unfortunately, you're gonna be seeing a lot of my head in this video. Um, I actually made this video first before my previous video. And I still didn't quite have the setup that I needed. And yeah, you're gonna see my, my head a lot. I wasn't even sure I was going to publish this video, but then I thought, mm, if, if I wait until everything's perfect all the time before putting stuff out there, then nothing will ever get done. So it's all a learning process. Besides, you don't have to be perfect all the time. So I'm taking my golden fluid acrylics and I'm gonna put some paint on the page. And you'll be able to see, once I start spreading the paint around with my brayer, that the gray pieces of paper that I had just put on are textured. They kind of have a cracked leather sort of texture to them. And when I put the paint over them, you can see it. It was really neat. There you can see the texture. That's really a neat thing about art is you can put all kinds of things in it. You're really only limited by your imagination. Art journaling is really nice because you can do all sorts of experiments and make tons and tons of art and it's all in this little book in the palm of your hand. I used to make a lot of art on canvas. This is a little pocket that I made. Um, it's made out of wax paper and I just folded it and then I took it to my sewing machine and sewed each side. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You can see through it enough that you can see what's in it, but you can still tell it's a pocket. I promise I do know how to work glue. <laughs> you can't tell from this, but I, I promise I do know. So I'm gonna press this down a lot and spread the glue out underneath so that I don't end up with glue lines when it dries. And there's my head. Oh look, all my gray hairs. Anyway, getting back to what I was saying, I used to make art on canvas. And I had all these canvases lying around and I didn't know what to do with them. They were just collecting dust and I tried to sell them, but it you know, was slow going. It, it can be difficult to sell art, especially over the internet. I don't do art shows or that kind of thing, like art fairs, where I go to sell art. Um, I did I did one art fair and I didn't sell anything. And then I did another one where I was selling some crochet things and I sold a couple, but it wasn't enough to even cover the cost of being there and having the booth. But mostly I just didn't enjoy it. I'm not really a person who likes crowds of people. I find them really exhausting. So that wasn't a real good venue for me. And I decided I don't really like to try to sell my art. I just like to make the art. 
So art journaling works really well for that. I still wanted to share my art and inspire other people to do art, so that's why I started making these videos. So I've got my metallic silver paint marker. This is acrylic paint. And I'm adding some pattern in here. The page behind this page is a scrapbook paper page. And I kind of looked at the pattern on there and tried to replicate it on this page. As you can see, it's sticking out at the top. So it has some continuity to it. And I really like how that turned out. When I made this journal, I made it more like a junk journal than an art journal. And I used all kinds of different papers and I wanted them in all different sizes. And it really stretches my imagination and forces me to be creative and I like that. So I've got a little tag that I made from an index card. I had to buy a pack of index cards and they had to specifically be three by five unlined index cards um, because I entered a county fair and when you entered stuff in the crochet and knitting category, you had to attach this specific index card with all kinds of information written on it to your project. So I had to buy a whole pack of index cards and I only needed like two of them. I thought, what on earth am I gonna do with the rest of these index cards? But I ended up using them a lot in my art journals. I use them for little tags like this and I use them for writing my sentiments on and they're really handy and they're, they're the perfect weight, the perfect size. I like them a lot. So it's one of those happy accidents that Bob Ross talks about. I had trouble initially deciding what to put on my tag, but I went back again to my color card for inspiration. Now I could put something on the card that isn't normally red, but I could color it red. But my brain is pretty literal and I have a hard time making things a different color other than what they normally are. So I knew I didn't want to do flowers. So my other choice for things that were red were basically fruits. So I decided on cherries. And I'm taking my watercolor markers and coloring them in. And I tend to start with the darks and then move to the lighter shades. Um, that's something I learned when I started painting with acrylics. I normally have a hard time with watercolor, or I had a hard time learning watercolor, I should say, because it's the opposite of how you need to work with watercolors. In watercolor, you start with the lights and then you get progressively darker. So I had to change the whole way that I do things. But in this case, um, I did leave the highlights, so I knew not to color those in, but because these are markers and I'm not using water, I can work from dark to light, as long as I make sure I don't color in the parts that are supposed to be white. Now you may be wondering why I hold my pen so funny. My index finger, that joint at the very end, is stiff and hypermobile, so it bends backwards. And it's painful for me to write when I'm using that joint. Um, and I actually have less control over my pen if I use that finger. So I tend to just kind of tuck it up out of the way. But it does look weird. If you're wondering about my tattoo, it says, sing your own song, and it's a music staff with birds on it. I did design it myself. It's got watercolor splashes behind it. I have been a musician for a very long time. Unfortunately, with my fingers, I don't really play too much anymore, but music has been a passion of mine for a long time.
I tend to like to put nature into my art a lot. Occasionally I will do buildings and cityscapes, but not very often. I find nature to be very soothing. I find art to be very soothing as well, so it goes together for me. That's the neat thing about art. It kind of gets you to slow down and just be in the moment. It's one of those things where you don't have to rush through it. it you don't have to get something specific done. You just play and do whatever you feel like doing. I think a lot of people think that you need to have talent to be an artist, but you really don't. It's just all play. Just do whatever you feel like doing. Keep going until you like it. And the cool part is, is nobody else has to like it. Art is so subjective. If you like it, there's somebody else out there who's going to like it, I guarantee you. But really, the best art is art that you make for yourself. That's another reason I like journaling. I'm not tempted to make art that somebody else might like. When you do that, you get all in your head. I like art because it gets me out of my head. I spend too much time in there. I probably should have added an S to the end of this word because there are two cherries, but there it is. We don't have to be perfect. Actually, I don't like art that looks perfect. I don't know, it just doesn't seem human. I think that looks pretty good. Now I need something to put on the other page. And I'm looking through an old Birds and Blooms magazine. I used to work at a library, and when we would get new magazines in, we would take one from the back of the stack that was the oldest and put it out on a shelf for anybody to take. So I've taken quite a few magazines from the library that were discarded. Libraries are good resources for stuff, all kinds of stuff. I've got my bird cut out and I really like this bird. It's the right color, it's the right size, and it's looking in the right direction. I wanted the bird to be looking in toward the middle of the spread and not out. If it was looking outward, then your eye would kind of follow where the bird's looking and go off the page. But because the bird is looking in, then your eye is drawn back toward the tag with the cherries on it. I was initially looking for some flowers to put in there, but I didn't really see anything that I liked. I also don't like having too many magazine elements so I decided to get my scrapbook paper out and make some leaves. I really wish this page had stripes that were closer together, but it is what it is. I decided this leaf was way too big and not at all what I wanted. So I end up making them much smaller. And because I have to make them smaller, you can't really see the stripes. But it's definitely better in that size. That's the really cool thing with collage, 
because you can just put pieces together and nothing's permanent until you decide you're going to stick it down. So that way you can really get a feel of what the page is going to look like. Oh, hello, head. I do tend to use a lot of glue when I glue things down, just because I really want it to stick. I do have matte gel medium and Mod Podge and things like that. I, I use um, Elmer's glue for most things. I've used matte gel before, but I don't, I just feel like it doesn't stick as well as I want it to. If I'm going to use something where I need to spread the glue with a brush, then I tend to use Mod Podge because it's just cheaper. I save my matte medium for other things. So now I've got my ink pen and I'm adding some details, adding veins to the leaves. Adding little details can make a big difference. Here I'm adding some shading under the leaves and it kind of makes it pop off the page. It's these little things that just make the piece feel finished and polished. And it doesn't have to be anything intricate where you get bogged down in every vein and every leaf. Just, you know, little hints of things. I don't know if you can hear the birds outside. <laughs> Spring is here. Now I decided the purple berries that the bird is standing on and has in his beak are just too purple. There's no other purple on the page and the first thing you really see when you look at this spread is, oh, purple. It stands out way too much. So I'm taking my red acrylic markers and I'm going over the purple berries. And like all the other things I do with acrylics, I start with the darks. I'm not really sure why. It is important to have darks though. I see a lot of beginning artists who don't have enough dark values in their work. Dark makes things pop. It makes bright colors brighter. It just adds a lot of dynamic, um, dynamics with the light. That's definitely much better with the red rather than the purple. Because this tag is removable, I decide I'm going to put something on the back. And this is a book of stickers. They're just washi tape stickers. I got this from Amazon. There's some um, papers in the back. I don't use it a whole lot, but I do, I do like it. It's kind of got a vintage feel, which I don't put a whole lot of in my journals. But sometimes I do. This sticker was perfect. It's got the red, it's got a flower, it's, it's uh, the right size. Because it's washi tape, I made sure to press it down a lot. So I don't want the edges curling. And there I add a silver border, like I did with the other side. 
I had to cut most of that out because my head was pretty much in the way the whole time. And now I just have to add my sentiment. I do tend to get picky with my shapes. I'm pretty good at eyeballing them and if they're not perfect, it bothers me. So I like placing it there, but it's too white. It stands out too much. Your eye is drawn to that rather than moving around toward the bird. So I decide I'm going to paint it. I've got some metallic silver paint and that's a Liquitex Basics paint. And it's really hard to cover the entire surface of a tiny piece of paper like that because you have no place where you can put your fingers. But if you try to spread it, the paint around without using your finger to hold it down, then it just moves on you. that's all right. I'm used to having paint all over. As soon as I open a tube of paint, it's everywhere on my hands. I don't know, it's my superpower. So the silver was too dark, so I added a little bit of white over the top, and that made it a lighter gray, similar to the uh, textured pieces of paper that I added at the beginning. And that's definitely a much better color. Now, it took me quite a while to figure out what I was going to put on there, especially because it's a small piece of paper. I didn't want a bigger piece of paper because I thought it would overpower the piece. So I'm getting out my stamps. These are just alphabet stamps. These are kind of neat because they have capital letters, but they have two lowercase letters. One is like a typeset and the other one is more of a cursive. But I decide to use the capital letters in this case, and we're just going to go with real simple word, art. Most annoying part is trying to get it straight. <laughs> I'm using my archival ink. If I use distress ink with these stamps, it tends to like bleed and get fud fuzzy on the edges. The archival ink really has a nice crisp stamp. And that's it, it's finished. I think it turned out really nice. I like that you can remove it and see the art on the back. Thanks for coming along with me. Hope you have a great day. Happy creating.